if, if we were to pull the rug from under your feet and take all this away, where would your life be? I wouldn't be on, on, on carpet anymore. I'd be back on lino, you know, because if the rug has gone from under my foot, then the old lino is underneath that. And lino is cold and bare and hard. And that's where my life would be again. The, the comfort, the extra little bit that makes it special would be gone. Yeah. We talk about this being a quiet revolution. See, this is exploding beyond our most wildest, exciting dreams. That's in Wales, was this? I couldn't tell you. Mary is one of a thousand people in the Penwith area of Cornwall receiving a helping hand to improve yeah. her quality of life, health, and well being. Yeah. Well, when we first met Mary, it was on a, a quite a bleak. January morning, weren't it? You looked a little bit worse for wear. Yeah. So to see her now, as she's sat there now, all dressed and everything, it's quite amazing to think that that was only two months ago. Last week, we spoke a bit about driving, so that would be fantastic to kind of come full circle. How would your recovery have been had you not have met Josh and had the support? Not. This is very nice of you to come and do it. It wouldn't have been anything. <laughs> but he's got a determination. He can just get you to say no. It's good. It's really good. You are good, Josh. Coordinated by Age UK, the Living Well programme involves practitioners and volunteers, helping to spot, then helping to make small changes that over time make a big difference. It all began as the Nuki Pathfinder in 2012, involving a sample group of just 106 people. We've seen patients improve in their confidence and most importantly in their social connectivity which has been a hugely positive um, step forward in, in them managing their health and their well-being. What we've also seen is that the people working within the Pathfinder, all of the clinicians involved, have felt a tremendous buzz from being involved in this piece of work. And also, of course, importantly from a commissioning perspective, we've seen a cost impact in that patients are no longer attending uh, hospital or general practice appointments with the frequency with, that they were, and their demand for social care is slightly reduced as well. The story is the same in Penwith, where the scheme began rolling out in January 2014. The Penzance Memory Cafe Group, which meets fortnightly, is one of the local projects that has referrals through the Living Well programme. What kind of things do you chat about? Oh, we have a nice laugh and giggle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes, that's nice. She's being like a good friend, really. Oh, it's lovely. You shouldn't be telling older people what to do. You should be asking them. Um, one of my favourite sayings was, they have their choice, as long as they've got breath in their body, they've got choice. So let them have that choice. You know, when there is a group set up, OK, you have to say, come along and I'll meet you at the door and take you in. That's important. Being, you know, and so that people can trust you and feel that they're going to be looked after. If the stories aren't compelling enough, the statistics speak volumes. Those involved in the Nuki Pathfinder said their sense of well-being had improved by nearly a quarter, as well as a 40% drop in hospital admissions for long-term conditions. There's also been a 5% reduction in demand for adult social care. And as far as the practitioners are concerned, 87% of them say that working with the voluntary and community sector has made their work more meaningful. Living Well has also received national recognition. It's about a collaboration between community, families, individuals uh, and the state offering crucial support. And I think what you're doing here uh, is immensely inspiring. So uh, m I think my job is to try and change the system to uh, encourage this sort of uh, uh, wonderful experimentation and development of a new way of doing things rather than the centre always blocking things. Uh, early on we asked the, the Cornwall Council how many voluntary sector organisations are registered in Penwith, so it's, you know, it's a tiny little end of the country really, and there's 670, and it's an enormous untapped resource, but bringing Age UK uh, into the team 
it's a voluntary sector. They work that sector. They know that well. That's how they network. So they're acting like a golden thread, tying all these bits together now. We talk about this being a quiet revolution. I think this is really something that is embedded within the community and it's coming from the ground up. So it's little ripples moving across the pond, but what's important is it's having a big impact. Uh, and we're genuinely seeing massive changes from what feels like quite a soft approach to patient management. It's often the preventative work that we lose sight of. And what we're demonstrating here is that actually what makes a big difference to our patients and clients is the small things. NHS Kerno and its partners in social care and the voluntary and community sector now plan to extend this quiet revolution across the whole county so that people from Butte to Land's End and the Isles of Scilly are able to benefit too. We will help anyone that needs help. Um, so, but traditionally, the sort of people that are vulnerable, isolated, struggling, lonely, are the older age group, but by not all means. But we've been working a lot with the police and, they, and their troubled families teams and looking, actually, there are other complexities here. And you're right, there are children and mental health. So as this rolls across Penwith and finds its feet firmer and then starts to roll down the county, because there's clearly other areas in Cornwall looking at Penwith, you know, enviously saying, well, when can we start that sort of way of working? It's a fundamentally different approach. And, it, uh, and we, we can't wait to help our colleagues elsewhere in the county you know, share our learning. Mm -hmm.